Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for another worship experience. The Lord has favored us again with life and an opportunity to worship him virtually. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you will make your word understandable and help us to hear as if it was your voice talking directly to each one of us individually. So uh, that we can do whatever you instruct us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are talking about holy characters bear fruit for God. Holy characters bear fruit for God. And uh, our text is found in Romans chapter 7 verse 4. That's what we're going to uh, basically read, but we're going to deal with the whole uh there's another chapter that we are using as the example, Acts chapter 10. But uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 4 says, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. So holy characters, a character like God will bear fruit for God. Now, the text implies that we are in a family or brotherhood because uh, Paul says uh, he starts talking to the brethren. And that includes uh, everybody that was involved, women and everyone. Uh, in, in other words, uh, he's talking to the ones that have something in common. And it doesn't really matter how many uh, abstract things that you have in common. The only thing that will uh, solidify our relationship together as family or brotherhood is the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, so we ha we all have that in common, and 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 that's more than enough, more than sufficient to. Uh, maintain our relationships. Uh, shortly after Jesus went back to heaven, the early church began to meet together while trying to elude persecution. Persecution became God's instrument to work in the lives of the church uh, like the splitting of an atom. Uh, I heard a sermon by uh, Reverend Emmanuel Scott from Texas, he's uh, uh, gone on to glory now to be with the Lord, but he talked about the persecution of the church and how God used it to split the church. Like, like uh, in order for a atom to, to have more power, you have to split that atom. And God did that to the church by splitting the church using persecution and causing the church, the, church, the early church, to split. Uh, break up to split off, but still, even though they went in different directions to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ, they still had Jesus Christ in common, and that was more than enough to keep them together. Uh, they sent He sent them into different parts of the world uh, to bear witness of the salvific work of Jesus Christ on the cross that uh, brought about the means of salvation to the world. All people had to do was believe in his works and trust Jesus instead of trying to do enough good works on their own to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, and says, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. Speaking of God, for whoever will draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hallelujah. And then Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of, uh, of your, yourselves, or not of your own works in essence, not anything that you have done, but it is an unearned and unmerited gift from God. Now, having said all of that, uh, I'm ready to start uh, with the... Uh, the, the heart of the subject for today, the holy character bears fruit for God. Now, holiness does not define God. 
Holiness is not easy to understand. It's much like love. It does not define God, but love is what God is. And likewise, holy is what God is. And there is no word equal to the fullness contained in the word holiness. Uh, there's no thought or no, 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 no uh, 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 understanding that, that can give us the fullness of God's holiness. All of heaven's host, Israel and the church, gives praise to a holy God because that idea sets him apart from all of the other would-be gods. And, and we're bad about making different things and different people our God, but the true and living God is should be set apart in our hearts as being far above and more than anybody or anything else that mankind might want to set up as a God. Exodus chapter 11 and verse, chapter 15 and verse 11 says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, that's little g, uh, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise and doing wonders. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Isaiah chapter six, verse three says, and one of the angels speaking of uh, uh, cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. God planned for us to be holy. And since he's the author of the best plan for our lives, holiness is what we are to be. And then our plan must set God apart from any other deities or would be deities, just as God's holiness sets us apart. He called us and sanctified us, set us apart for his use. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know this is the English standard version, for I know the plan I have for you declares the Lord, a plan for welfare, that's our good welfare, and not for evil. God plans for, it, it, sometimes it might look like it's not good, just like with Joseph, but, but, but in the end, the sovereign God that we serve and belong to has our best interest at heart, and he might not intervene while we're going through life, but he will intervene and cause the outcome to work to our favor, just like he did Joseph. Joseph went through some stuff, but the end result was what God was looking for. And when we go through some things in life, it's the end result that God is looking to use for his glory. So, 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 so God has a plan uh, to 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 work things out to to let, let's see there's a verse uh, that says uh, for we know that all things work together for to for God to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. God works things out for our good. No matter how dark the night might be, we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So God has a plan for us, uh, to, to a plan for our good welfare and not for evil, a plan to give us a future and a hope. God cares about us so much that he has given us a perfect plan to bless us and others while we emulate God's holiness in the way that we show compassion for others. Now, along with us being blessed ourselves, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. This is a great way to be holy as God is holy. Now, Acts chapter 10 gives us a story of the planned meeting of two men, Peter and Cornelius, Peter and Cornelius. Now, now, now uh, the whole 
entire chapter uh, is about these two men and their meeting, their coming together. It starts out by identifying Cornelius as a devout man, somebody who practiced uh, worshiping God uh, daily. And he put that worship into practice by freely giving to those, the people that were in need, helping people. And the second thing is he prayed daily. He, 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 he was constantly in prayer to God. And if you don't pray to God, you got to trust him to work things out for you. So Cornelius was termed or defined as a devout man, one who, who, who helped people that were in need, and he prayed. And, 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 and one day about three o'clock in the afternoon, an angel appeared to him. And while Cornelius was standing there trying to figure out, am I seeing things? Is this really happening? The angel started speaking to him and said, told him that his, his arms, what he had been doing, the giving, the way he had been living, helping people out, and his prayer had caught God's attention. And, 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 and there are some things that, that really will catch God's attention. And the way we live and the way we commune and communicate with God and allow him to communicate with us will catch God's attention. Now, now Cornelius says uh, that he tells the story of how the angel told him that there was one Simon uh, that they call Peter. He was in Joppa uh, staying with a man named uh, Simon also who was a tanner. And uh, Simon the tanner lived down by the sea. And, and he told Cornelius to, to, to send some men there to get Peter and bring him back. Now, 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 I need, I need to, to remind us that Peter is a Jew. Cornelius is a non-Jew. The law said that Jews would have nothing to do with non-Jews, especially going into their house. And, and, and so this God is, is, is taking Peter and the church to a next level, to a higher level than they had been. Because now they no longer belong to the law. They no longer was under the tutage of the law, but they were under the grace of Jesus Christ. So Cornelius did as, as uh, the angel told him. He, 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 Cornelius was kind of a captain of the National Guard in that area. So, so he got uh, one of the men that served under him in his guards, and, 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 and he was an, an, uh, an Italian National Guard uh, in that area. So he sends two of his servants and one of the, 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 the leaders in the guard to get Peter. Now, when they get close to the place where Peter was, uh, Peter is getting ready for, his mind is getting on lunchtime. And so he went up on the balcony, up on the rooftop, as they were called at that time, and and and, and he was thinking about eating. He, 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 he was hungry. And he kind of fell into a trance light. And in this trance, he saw a big sheet let down from heaven by the four corners and, and, and it came down to the earth before in front of Peter and it had all kinds of animals, reptiles and birds on it. And then the voice said to Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so. I can't do that. That's uh, uh, that's in direct conflict with the law. I'm a Jew. I live by the law. And, 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 and the voice said to Peter, uh, what God has deemed to be clean and uncommon, 
something that you can eat. God says it's OK for you to eat it. And if God says it's OK, that ought to be good enough, Peter. And Peter said, OK. And at that time, the, the what, what, what one uh, commentator called the picnic blanket was lifted back up to heaven. And the lesson for Peter in that uh, vision was that God has no respect of person. The Jews and the Gentiles are the same in God's sight. And the lesson for us, the church of the day, is to learn that God still doesn't have any respect of person. White, black, green, purple, orange, whatever the nationality I might be, that we are all the same in God's sight. And so uh, Peter hears them now, the, pe the men from Cornelius, calling for him. So he goes down and he, 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 he goes to the door and says, uh, I'm, I'm Peter that you're calling for. And, and they told him that Cornelius had sent for him. Now, Peter already had just had a vision, a lesson from God, that it was okay for him to go to Cornelius. Now, uh, so uh, the men, three men that came from Cornelius' house, they stayed there with Peter. Uh, he invited them in. They stayed and fed them and... and uh, they rested the night. The next day, they get up and they head out for Cornelius. Evidently, it took about a day's journey to, for, from, from Joppa to uh, Caesarea, where uh, Cornelius lived. They arrived at Cornelius' house, and uh, Cornelius meets them, and, 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 and he bows to Peter, and he bows down and worshiped him or to worship him. And Peter grabs him and lifts him back up and said, I'm just a man just like you. You don't, you don't, don't, don't worship me because there's one that's worthy to be worshiped. So, so Peter asked Cornelius, why, why, why did you send for, for me? And he went through the whole story of how he saw the angel uh, in a vision and the angel instructed him. It's amazing in this story at how uh, with Cornelius and with Peter, they both were getting instructions and they followed the instruction. They obeyed the instruction. How much better off would we be? How much more fruitful and, 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 and less, uh, 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 what, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, you know, we have a way of allowing things to separate us instead of bringing us together. We allow our creeds and race and all of that to separate us. And, and my, I might throw in the real reason behind it all is it's all about who has control of the resources, who's rich and who's poor. But that's not an interest to God. God wants everybody to be the same, to have the same, and treat everybody the same. So Cornelius goes to, through the story. And now Peter, uh, before he starts to preach, he says to Cornelius and the people in his household, he said, you do understand that I'm a Jew and Jews don't normally do what I'm doing. I, I'm, I've come to your household. I'm in your house. Jews, don't, that's not normal for Jews. But nevertheless, we are, we are here. I'm here to do the will of God. And so Peter starts to, to, to open up the word, the plan of salvation, the gospel, the good news from God, that God sent his son to die for sinners. And, and, and Paul says in the book of Romans, all have sinned. All includes every race, everybody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he went on to say, God gave his son who died on an old rugged cross for the sins of the world. In other words, now, more than the Jews have a right to for God's favor. 
When Jesus died on Calvary and the veil was rent from top to bottom, that opens up the pathway for everybody that will accept Jesus. It opens up the pathway to God for us. Now, he goes through the full story of how Jesus died. He, and, he, and he points out, he reminds Cornelius, you know, you heard the story by now of what happened in Judea. You heard how Jesus did good, went about doing good, and, and there was no vile or no evil found in him when the record was searched. You, you, you know the story. But you need to understand that it applies to you, too. And all you have to do and all your household has to do is to believe in Jesus' salvific work on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died to pay the price for all of our sin. And I have to believe that. You have to believe that. And then God will accept us. And there's no other way. So Peter uh, goes on to fulfill the great commission of teaching Cornelius and his household all the things that Jesus had commanded him. In other words, G Peter did what we need to be doing more of. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. Peter was doing what Jesus said do. He was lifting him up. And we need to learn to lift Jesus up more than when what we say. But what we do, the way we live, the holy character that we exhibit before non-sinners, non-believers rather. Peter went on to, to, to close by saying he died, they buried him. But God raised him up from the dead. And now he's at the right hand of the father in heaven, making intercessions for us. And, 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 and somebody said, well, uh, Cornelius probably was speaking for the whole group in his household said, well, we believe it. Somebody that came from Joppa with Peter said, well, then the only thing left to do is baptize him. And baptizing means it's a symbolic gesture of dying to the law and coming alive to grace under Jesus Christ. And they were baptized. They were converted. And that's what's important. John 8 and 12 says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I'm the light of the world and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And John 9 and 5 says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But he says to his disciples, I'm going away and you shall be the light of the world. So we have, we, the light is a reflection of Jesus Christ. And we ought to reflect Jesus wherever we go in all that we're doing. There comes a time when, and now is that time, when we are to reflect the light of Jesus Christ so that others can see their way to Jesus. Verse uh, 28 of uh, Acts chapter 10 says, and he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate or visit in the house of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. And Peter willingly followed the instruction. The main focus of God's holiness and the holiness of the church, which we are his people, uh, is that God does not have to choose the best to have the best. He always chooses, sometimes it seems like he chooses the worst with the intentions of making them the best. 
When I was a teenager active in neighborhood sports, two individuals would maneuver their way to being the ones that chose a team. Each team leader would choose the one he felt could contribute the best to the victory. If you were not one of the best, you would most likely be one of the last to be chosen. But God is not like that. Romans 2 and 11 says, for there is no respect of person with God. First Peter 1 and 15 says, but as uh, let, let, let's see, I, I kind of scrolled away from it. Let me see if I can get back to it. Right. There, there it is. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. If we are to be holy as the Lord is holy, then we must react to others the way God does. We must learn to choose to favor those who feel a need for someone to help them to be better than they are. Cornelius was looking for somebody and, the, and God through the angel showed Cornelius where to find somebody that was willing to to help him to and his household to be better than what they are. There's somebody I'm convinced right now that there's somebody waiting on whoever is listening to my voice. God has prepared you already and he has prepared them to receive you. All has to happen is obedience to God's will. And he'll bring the need to the one that needs Married couples should not treat each other like adversaries, but to work as teammates with one goal. Lifting up Jesus. Members of the body of Christ should not be divided among themselves into different groups and societies, but they should live as teammates. We should work together and not against each other. This country would be a much better place to live if more government leaders would see each other as teammates instead of uh, in a partisan way. This will make a radical uh, change, but it will take a radical change in the minds of all of us. This will require being converted from the world's way of thinking into God's way of thinking. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. When we allow the love of God to flow through us, then there will be no haves and have nots. Everybody will have equally. God loves us so much that he gave his only son to die in our place. And his son laid down his life so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. He laid down his life and they buried him. But early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hands. And if we could be learn to be concerned and compassionate toward others. That would be fulfilling God's requirement to be like him. To live holy lives. And that's all I've got today. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to genuinely be more like you in every way. Establish your holiness in us that we will allow your light to shine through us in the way we live. Let the mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I've got a golf buddy. He says uh, you, he, he does a devotional on, on Facebook and he, he says, uh, well, that's it for today. You know, the, the, know, the, know the story. I'm off to hit some golf balls. So you ought to know the story by now. Wear your mask. Practice distancing yourself from others. For the purpose of keeping them safe and you being safe from the virus that we are dealing with and wash your hands often and this too shall pass. 
I love you and I know God loves you. We'll see you farther on up the road. Bye bye.